Hello, uh, welcome. This is another in the series of quick answers on MQL4 programming. Today I'm looking at the iCustom function, and this is actually in response to the question that prompted me to make this series in the first place. I received a question on one of my other videos um, asking about modifying the Heikenashi indicator to add a moving average. And my response to that was, don't do it. Instead, use IMA on array and iCustom. Uh, I believe that's a much better answer, but it turns out it was only a good answer if you already know what you're doing, and I simply confused someone by giving that answer. So that prompted me to begin this series of videos, and I've already covered IMA on array in an earlier video. I'll put a link on the screen to that. And today I'm covering iCustom, and this will actually show the indicator that I was being asked about. Um, I still hold that it's better to do this than to modify the existing Heikenashi indicator, and I'll also explain why I believe that. But for those who like to read the last chapter of a book first, let's get straight into the code and how this works. So on screen, I've already created the indicator, and this is what we're trying to show. In the left window here, I have the Heikenashi indicator loaded along with the new moving average on the Heikenashi indicator. On the right window, I've got a standard candlestick chart with the Heikenashi moving average indicator. And I hope you can see that the moving average indicator is the same on both charts. Um, I've also got the data window open here on the left. So if I just highlight two of the bars here, so on this window that has Heikenashi, the Heikenashi average, the second to bottom number there is 891, and the bar before 893. If I come over and do the same on the same bars here that's shown the candlestick chart, 891 and 893. Trust me, the, the line showing the moving average is the same on both charts. Uh, and that's just to indicate that you don't need to have the Heikenashi chart loaded in order to show this moving average on Heikenashi. So now let's look at the code and see how I did that. Most of this is fairly standard and these are quick answers so I'm go not going to go through in a lot of detail. Comment block, the standard properties for an indicator. I have two buffers, uh, one to hold the moving average and one to hold the Heikenashi value. Uh, this first buffer is the moving average, so I'm coloring that white solid, and I'm making it quite wide so it shows up on the video. The second buffer is the Heikenashi values, which I'm not going to show on the chart, so I'm simply setting the color to none and draw none for that. There are three inputs for the moving average. The moving average periods is fairly standard. The method for calculating moving average, defaulting to simple moving average, and which Heikenashi price. Let me go quickly back to the chart. Uh, here on the Heikenashi chart, you'll see in the data window, there are four values, low, high, high, low, open, and close. Uh, let me remove the moving average just to... Right, so those are the only four values. These are the four buffers produced by the Heikenashi indicator, and they are numbered from zero is the low, high, to three, which is the close. Back to the code. So I'm by default choosing three, which is the last of the buffers, and that's the close price from Heikenashi. Uh, but it's an input, so you can choose one. The two buffers, the moving average buffer and the Heikenashi buffer, and then as my usual style, uh, I'm, set, I'm doing a define to show which of the buffers relates to which indicator. These lines are simply associating indicator numbers with buffers and adding the label that you see on the data window, Heikenashi average and Heikenashi value. And then this is where we do the work. Very simple. Uh, the standard function to calculate how many bars need to be calculated. You see this quite often. Uh, I've also got this count variable. And then I'm simply looping through from limit minus one this is common code in an indicator. This is where I set the value of count because I'm doing a moving average. I might have a 20 period moving average, 
but if I'm only up to bar number seven, I don't have 20 periods to calculate a moving average. All this does is set the moving average period that I'm going to use in the calculations to be as many bars as I have until I have more bars than I've asked for. So once I get up to bar number 20, then I'll be using 20 bars in my moving average calculation. Um, and the moving average calculation is done here in the IMA on array, which we've seen in the earlier video. And that's why I'm using count as the number of bars for the calculation. But then what this video is all about is the iCustom function. iCustom is a function that allows you to retrieve values from custom indicators in the same way that you might retrieve IMA or iMACD on the built-in functions. The arguments are slightly different because there is because each custom indicator may have different numbers of arguments. But to begin with, the symbol and the period are common. Then the name of the indicator, Heikenashi. And again, I'll flip back to the chart. We can see that the name of the indicator is Heikenashi. So I'm going to be asking for the values from this custom indicator. Following that would normally be the arguments passed in to that indicator. Now, Heikenashi has no um, usable values in here. The only inputs to the Heikenashi function are some color settings, which are not needed. Um, if I were doing this on another indicator, I would need to add in here the list of values passed in the inputs in the order that you see them on screen. But because this is Heikenashi, I don't need to pass anything in there and I can move straight on to the next value, which is the value number that I want to retrieve. And if you remember up here in the inputs, HA price, I'm looking for the third value from the Heikenashi indicator and then the usual offset, which is I being the bar number. All I'm doing is putting that into my Heikenashi buffer and then my Heikenashi buffer goes into the MA on array. So iCustom, very simple function, uh, but it's very powerful if you want to use an existing custom indicator to provide values to create a new indicator. And when I compile that and run, and now let me go back and add it back into and there it is. Uh, if I change the values on this, so at the moment I'm using the third value. Let me change that to the second, which is the open value from Heikenashi. You can see that this line has changed slightly. Let me pick the values or pick from the third bar back. The average is 896 there. And from the, which bar did I choose? 896 and over here, 893. So you can see we're getting different values, but if I make the same change here, that line also changes. And now I'm also getting 896. So that's all there is to using the iCustom function. It's very simple. This is a very quick answer. Um, I'm not posting this code anywhere for download. If you're having trouble reading it, you may be watching in standard definition. I do upload all of these in high definition. Uh, and if you're watching in standard definition, particularly if you're watching on a mobile, you may have difficulty. I suggest um, watching high definition later. But that's all there is to using the iCustom. Now, to the reason that I recommended this rather than modify the Heikenashi indicator. It's firstly, I wouldn't want to modify the existing indicator, but I'm assuming that by modify, it would mean take a copy and change. That's creating a complex indicator that does both Heikenashi and the moving average. And my principle is always take the easy way out. Um, as was described to me many years ago when I was a junior programmer, um, Development of software is a two-step process. Step one, make it work. Step two, make it better. 
And over my career, I've seen a lot of developers get caught up in an almost infinite loop on step two without ever finishing step one. So whenever you're faced with a problem, find the easy way out, make it work, and then make it better. I hope these are useful to you. Um, I would appreciate any comments or questions. If there's something else you would like me to cover, just leave a comment and I will get to it when I can. Um, if you are finding these useful, leave a like. And if you want to see more, then remember to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I post more of these videos. Thank you very much for watching.